So tonight I will be uh, reading the Chaitana Karaniya Sutta, which is uh, Chaitana means um, will or intention or wish, and Karaniya is to uh, to make to. Uh, um, To act, and so this is a sutta about uh, act of will or making a wish. So it describes um, how dharma works from uh, the virtue all the way up to liberation, and how it, in fact is a natural process by which we align with instead of um, uh, forcing things, certain things to happen. And it's a very beautiful sutta that explains the natural flow of Dhamma from one step to another. And it also talks about uh, natural samadhi or happy samadhi, which is what we practice, um, the collectedness of mind that happens by wholesome mental development, which means cultivating uh, love, compassion, joy, and these wonderful uplifted states of mind that carry awareness with them and uh, naturally bring the mind to a collected and harmonious state. And afterwards, uh, since it's a very good sutta to uh, prepare us for meditation, remembering the, all the steps, how it works, from virtue to liberation, um, then we will simply go into the meditation. And so, a good way to listen to this is perhaps to really uh, feel at ease and relax any tension in your body, <clears throat> in your mind. <clears throat> Try to let go of everything you were doing before in your mind. And allow yourself to be fully present to this wonderful sutta being virtuous monks endowed with virtue no need to wish may i be free from remorse it is the dhamma that by being virtuous endowed with virtue one is free from remorse And this is also, uh, this also works with uh, generosity. Um, this first step is uh, quite wonderful and uh, important. And it reminds us the reason why we, in fact, hold this virtue is, yes, for others, but also for ourselves so that our minds can be light, free from remorse. Free from remorse, monks, no need to wish, may gladness arise in me. It is the Dhamma that, being free from remorse, gladness arises in one. This is Pamoja, which gladness is a good word in English, but also perhaps lightness of mind or uplifted in mind which works and um, here is that this quality of mind that happens when we align with Dhamma when we align with goodness when we align with truth the mind naturally has nothing to worry about because it knows that it has done everything that it could to do the right thing 
and there was no living beings hurt on our path or as minimal as could have been. Nothing was stolen from anyone. Nothing was, no lies were told to confuse or uh, these lies that in fact we sometimes uh, are tempted to say to uh, hide some things that might be hard to, for us to admit. But then in the end, when we are clear and in line with truth, our mind is simply naturally very, very uh, calm because it has nothing to fear. There is no lies can always come back to us. Uh, hurt can always come back to us. <clears throat> And this, at whichever level we take it, uh, whether it's really intense, coarse, or whether it's uh, more subtle, more refined, these, when the mind is free from worrying about these things, it simply allows a very solid ground for meditation, a very wonderful, open, fertile soil for meditation. And we are already there, like this sutta is going to reveal here. And so generosity is also uh, part of this here in this virtue we could also say that generosity and we when we look back in our past and see that we've done as much as we could to help to support goodness support truth support others this is a kind of happiness that is quite precious and unshakable and cannot be easily ripped away from us. And the mind, when it knows this, when the mind is aligned with this kind of virtue and generosity, it is really uplifted and happy. And this is what the meaning of this pamoja here means. Being glad, monks, no need to wish, may joy arise in me, it is the Dhamma that, by being glad, joy arises in one. Joyful in mind, monks, no need to wish, may my body be relaxed. It is the Dhamma that, by being joyful in mind, one's body is relaxed. Because we stop uh, always holding on to all kinds of things. When the mind is joyful, it is simply joyful. And the body naturally becomes calm from the uplifted state of mind. Relaxed in body, monks, no need to wish. May I experience happiness. It is the Dhamma that by being relaxed in body, one experiences happiness. Here, sukha could also be translated as ease, happiness or ease. Happy monk, no need to wish. May my mind be collected and harmonious. It is the Dhamma that by being happy, one's mind is collected and harmonious. This is quite wonderful and this is at the core of this wonderful teaching on Dhamma Samadhi or natural Samadhi is that this is not with uh, forcing or controlling the mind to do anything. In fact, it's by cultivating states that generate this wonderful calm and happiness the mind becomes collected on its own. It stops being agitated by all kinds of outwards distractions, all kinds of 
uh, unwholesome feelings that could have a hold on us inside, then there is only joy and happiness within, and this is how the mind is collected, because it is content, it's not running away to anything anymore. Collected and harmonious in mind, monks, no need to wish, may I know and see clearly. It is the Dhamma that by collected mental harmony one knows and sees clearly. When this happens, the mind becomes very still since it's not looking outwards, it's not agitated, it doesn't quiver or shake, it's not affected by all kinds of things, it's very settled and established in this inner joy, inner happiness. And what happens naturally through this natural stillness of the mind is that when the mind is still, we start to see things really clearly for what they are. Because the mind is not moving all over the place. It's very still and aware. And with this awareness, then we can see everything with very accurate precision. Even little, little, tiny movements in the mind. Knowing and seeing clearly, no need to wish, may I disengage completely. It is the Dhamma that by knowing and seeing clearly, one disengages completely. And this is where this Samatha Vipassana comes in as tranquility and insight or calm and mental observation or wise observation is to understand the mind and understand how the mind works by calming down samatha and this is by calming down we get to still the mind to a certain level where we really get to see agitation for what it is, distractions for what they are, and we are able to let go deeper and deeper and deeper. And this is the process of liberation. This is what the Buddha taught. And this is what is meant here by disengaging completely. Disengaging from all the distractions that create tension in our mind so we can enjoy the bliss of liberation. Disengaging completely, monks, no need to wish, may I be free from tension. In this, it is the Dhamma that by disengaging completely, one is free of tension. <clears throat> now here, this tension is usually translated as, as tanha, is this uh, big word craving that I try not to use too much. But here for our direct application in meditation and in daily life, and also in general, I feel like this word tension is much more appropriate for our purpose. And by disengaging completely, this is what I was explaining earlier, one gets to experience this bliss of releasing the tension of liberation. Free from tension, monks, no need to wish May I experience knowledge and sight of liberation. It is the Dhamma that by being tensionless, 
one experiences knowledge and sight of liberation. Once the mind is calmed down by joy and happiness and become very still, and we have clarity of awareness arising and we can see deeper states where we disengage even deeper in mental agitation, mental tension, let go of all of it. We reach this place where all the tension is abandoned, which is all the little distraction, little movements in the mind are completely fade away. There is no more tension. And this is also called seeing the Dhamma. And this is Nibbana, the knowledge and sight of liberation, which means liberation. It is something fairly hard to describe with words because it is a sphere beyond concepts and words. But here, the last paragraph, the Buddha says, So it goes, monks, one dhamma fulfilling the next. This is dhamma dhamme abhisandhanti. Each dhamma suffused by the previous one, going from this shore to the shore beyond. And the Buddha often talked about this shore and the shore beyond. And this shore is this world, this reality in which we live in with the six senses, including the mind, and the shore beyond is also called the deathless, amata, nibbana, the, the shore that goes beyond this world. And this is how the Buddha in this wonderful sutta explains so beautifully how this natural process works and this act of will this making a wish is in fact simply constantly aligning with the Dhamma aligning with the Eightfold Path aligning with generosity virtue and wholesome mental development bhavana discernment wisdom panya and simply by constantly aligning with these, constantly persevering, and this is the act of will here, then there is no need to wish for anything, to wish for the path to happen, because it will happen naturally. And so as we align with the Dhamma, the Dhamma will bring us there, carry us over to the shore beyond. And this is why the first level of awakening or understanding is called entering the stream. And so on these wonderful words from the Buddha, I invite you to Relax and let go completely of everything. Of yesterday or tomorrow. What you will do after this talk doesn't really matter so much right now. And simply smile. Perhaps feeling grateful for these wonderful words of the Buddha this wonderful opportunity that we have to be here speaking of Dhamma, listening to Dhamma, 
which means goodness, truth, liberation, happiness. And be glad at heart. Feeling the joy of the Dhamma. Uplifted by the wonderful qualities of the Dhamma. If there are any thoughts in your mind, just continually relax, let go of them. As soon as you notice you start holding to one or become distracted a little bit, simply take a step back, relax, smile. Whenever the time is right for you, whenever you feel like your mind has calmed down a little, you can bring up this warm, glowing feeling of love within your heart. without forcing it so much. If you wish, you can use a memory of a place you feel love for all the living beings. Maybe a place in nature Maybe it is a spiritual friend, someone you really love and appreciate. Maybe it is someone in your life. Maybe an animal. Or perhaps a sentence is good for you. May I be happy. May I be peaceful and calm. Or perhaps May all living beings feel the love in my heart.
And when the feeling of love arises, take delight in it and simply remain with it. for as long as you can. You may kindle it here and there when it starts to weaken. With an image or a sentence or memory. What matters is that you feel the feeling within you. same feeling that makes your cheeks blush and your palms sweat. This feeling of love you can feel down to the marrow in your bones. Let it suffuse your whole body. through and through. And smile. Whether you're a very advanced meditator or you're simply starting on the path, this meditation is always something to offer. Very profound in wisdom. So it's important never to overlook metta. It will keep surprising you all the way until you reach Nibbana.
if your mind gets distracted if your mind starts wandering Notice the slight tension in your head around your brain that arises with the distraction. and let it go, release both the tension and the distraction, relax, smile, this will make sure that you bring back a wholesome mind back into the love. the vehicle of awareness, of love. This ensures that you practice properly, not bringing tension into the meditation, rather constantly letting go. Whenever this feels right for you, you can simply pull the curtain, allow your love to shine in all directions at the same time. In one, two, three, four directions above and below, everywhere. and take delight in this feeling of boundless love.
make it the source, the well of your happiness right now. Right here. Who cares about anger, about jealousy, pride, envy, love is so much better. Why hurt ourselves? when we can cultivate this kind of happiness. So love boundlessly for no particular reason, unconditionally. Love for the sake of love for the sake of happiness, our own happiness, and all living beings' happiness. The Buddha called this Mitta Chitto Vimutti, the liberation of the heart by boundless love. here, now. The Buddha said, this kind of happiness is completely 
blameless, immaculate, So enjoy. This is the well we come to drink. This is where the Ariyas fill up. If you notice some tension arising in your body, remember not to try so hard. Simply let go, relax. And love again with a smile. Love is not something that we can force. It is something we become skilled at.
something that we nurture, that we kindle, that we grow.
Bhagavatu Sabha Mangalam Rakhantu Sabha Devata Sabha Bhuttanu Bhavena Sarasati Bhavantu Te Bhavatu Sabha Mangalam Rakhantu Sabha Devata Sabbatamma nubhavena sarasati bhavantute Bhavatu sabha mangalang rakantu sabha devata Sabha sangha nubhavena sarasati bhavantute May all blessings be with you. May all the devas protect you. May all the goodness that comes from the Buddha, his teaching, and the community of people who practice this way of life May you be well and protected. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty powers, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha-sasana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.